Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I have titled this message in the last of this series on being a success, blame. And these individuals that are successful are not the ones who blame, okay? Successful people who do not blame. Part of being a success is once again, getting over the blame, getting over shaming individuals. Uh, just moving on. I got too much work to do to be sitting around here blaming you. But you can look at everything that you want to look at as, oh, well, she still got issues and she blaming this one and that one. No, I'm not. I'm teaching now. <laughs> we passed all of that. We was past all that, what, back in uh, 19, whatever. You see what I mean? We got those individuals, though, because they refused to be the the ones that want a successful lifestyle therefore they bring other people down by projecting their issues onto other or the others or their assumptions so you've got to be the one who if you want to be that leader okay you want to be that one who's a success you got to be the one to shake that sort of thing off i'm shaking off the blame i'm shaking off what they're projecting on me okay i'm no longer going to be caught up in the conversation with people who just love pointing a finger at everybody else okay i will learn from what i see but i refuse to be in the box of accusations okay i will study the people who do this sort of thing but when it comes to my personal life my professional life i have i have to keep a level head i got too many people who rely on me you see so we can validate some people who are going through a lot, but what we're not going to do is get on that party bus of blame, 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 hey. No, we're not doing that, okay? So Romans 2, 1, therefore you have no excuse, O man, of every one of you who judges. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, practice the very same things. So when you are that one that's in a setting, if you will, let's say workplace since people can really identify with this sort of thing you know that you don't want to be the one that's passing judgment on folks be due to fair housing laws Uh oh you don't want to be the one who's passing judgment on folks because there's human resources uh <laughs> handbooks and so forth so you learn how to be that one that you listen with attentive ear and you're not putting people in any sort of box or telling them what your biased personal issues are about those type you don't do that you see so god he wants us to get to a place in the spiritual realm where we're not doing that either if somebody comes to us and needs prayer that we're not saying well wait a minute hold up girlfriend what's up with your clothes okay he wants us to get to a place where we're not sitting up there looking at our children and saying yeah you want something from us but wait a minute hold up you need to just stop dressing like that for a minute Okay, no, you need to teach at some point, but blaming and shaming is not going to get it done. First Peter 4, 12, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Every successful person has a trial. They have a story. Do not believe or follow after those ministers who conveniently do not share anything about their personal trials, upsets, nothing. At some point, we should have some idea of what the struggle or struggles have been over the years concerning a leader. When I came to God, for those who are not familiar, I'm going to be a bit transparent. When I came to God, I came to God living with a man. I came to God partying on Saturday and then every now and again going to church on Sunday. I came to God being abused by that man I was living with. Okay? So we wasn't all cleaned up and neither one of my parents were spiritual, religious, none of it. Told me to seek God when I got older, but that's not their cup of tea. When I came to them and told them that I was baptized, my mother gave me an attitude. When I went to my dad and said that um, I'm being released from college because having gone through all that traumatic stuff in that relationship, I could not deal with it any longer, trying to study, focus, all of that. And I said that God gave me that release. My dad looked at me as if I was crazy. So at the end of the day, I'm not that one that's coming to you like, oh, yes, everything was just per per perfect and right when I came to the Lord. And then still had a lot of baggage and issues that I had to deal with for decades. Okay. So 
work in progress even to this day. But thank God I don't have them type of trials that I had back in the day. So to be a success, yes, you won't go through a fiery trial. James 1, 2, 3, 4, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Let us make it plain, steadfastness. I'm going to bring that up. If this computer is going to move quick today, that will be awesome. Here we go. Steadfastness. The quality of being resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. No side wins without steadfastness in the face of adversity. Okay, that is the definition. And that was an example, a sentence provided. Let us continue to look for steadfastness. Other synonyms for it would be allegiance, allegiance, attachment, okay? The freedictionary.com, I'll bring that up. Firmly loyal or constant, fixed or unchanging, fixed or unmovable, okay? Now, here we are, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces what? steadfastness unmovable right unmovable faith you are going to stay where you are you are not going to be moved right in your faith you are not going to go down that bus of blaming other people for all sorts of things no i am good i'm firm in where i stand and let firmness right <laughs> but and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing okay James 1 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Once again, going back to that definition, firmly loyal or constant, fixed or unchanging, fixed or unmovable. Okay. Romans 5, 3 through 5, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. And yes, there are sufferings. I mean, you got to go through some trials, right? Once again, if you want to be a success in this life, in whatever you do, there's going to be some sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Okay. Matthew 7, 1 through 5, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take this speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Once again, when you are on that bus towards success, I got to talk about my shortcomings. I got to talk about how I overcame my shortcomings. I've got to talk about the things I still struggle with. That is why some people also are not good at being successful speakers because they're not transparent about who they are, okay? And it does take a lot of work to get to a place where you say, look, this is me. This is what I'm struggling with. These are my issues. I mean, it takes a lot. I'm not gonna sit up here and say it was easy. I was nervous. If you look at them early audios, you could see the fear in my eyes because I knew that at that particular time, there were certain subjects that were off limits. They were off limits. God was not about to let me speak on certain subjects, but the things that I, were, I was okay and all right with, the Lord was like, there's a green light. And that's why some subjects, you're just not going to get certain teachers to comment on. They're not going to... Um, have that dialogue with you because they're still struggling. So we got to see the speck in our, our eyes first or the log, the two by four that's in our eyes before we can go over there and take the speck out of somebody else's eye. Then that's when we say, listen, this is how I got over such and such. Here's the five tips. Here's the five signs. Here's the, you know, because, okay, we got over those things. Lord Jesus. 
You can't be running around here talking about, I'm going to be a success doing this, that, and the other, and you don't even want to face your weaknesses. You don't want to face your frailties. You don't want to deal with the issues that are going on in your household. I'm going to be a success. Well, there's issues at home. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Get those kids under control. There are early messages where you do not hear my kids crying in the background because I got my kids under control before I, <laughs> before I got on audio in the early days. I got books written, but I couldn't get those books written until I had a what system in place, a plan in motion. My household still had to run. Lord Jesus, you can't be a success if you don't have a plan, you don't have a purpose, you don't know what you're doing half the time. Oh, Lord. I'm talking to some, not all. John 16, 33, I've said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I've overcome the world. Sometimes all you got is Jesus and all you got are those things related to Jesus to keep you going each and every day. Successful people got some kind of faith that I'm seeing, even though I don't agree with some of their faiths, some of their denominations, what have you. But one thing about it, that's what's giving them the sense of peace. That's what's giving them the motivation. And I don't believe in taking people's gods away. If it's going to keep them from wanting to commit all sorts of crazy sin. I'm saying the type of sin where they're murdering folks. Go on and let that man have his God. I know you don't like the three-legged or the four-legged or the five eyes or whatever. But we can pray about that. We don't need to go upside that man's head. We don't need to be going in there kicking doors down. We don't need to be taking his statues. It's a process he's got to go through. The Lord has told so many believers that, those zealot believers, there's a process that these people got to go through before you go sitting up there telling them, I don't believe in your faith and I don't like what you preach and I don't know what you're talking about and that's just ridiculous and it doesn't sound God. Do you know that this is the faith that's keeping me from going upside somebody's head? You better leave me alone about my faith. <laughs> Come on, some of you all. This is what's keeping me sober-minded even though you might not agree with certain things. It's... Kind of funny that some folks took some information, as I've said in the past. May not agree with it, but ooh, I guess there must be some something working with her. I don't want to call it God because I don't believe. Okay, that's fine. But don't go trying to mess with people's gods, beating them up at the pulpit. And that's why there's one particular church I'm not attending now because that was going on. We're all believers, all believers, but you want to keep beating people up. And you can't have successful ministries keep beating people up. And it, it's the wrong people. If you're going to beat up some people, beat up some folks that's not at the church right now. But to beat the members that are there or to beat the visitors that are there, and we both serve in the same God, it's not that we weren't serving the same God. It's not that we um, had a difference of opinion when it came to Scripture. You just outrightly beating people up. Because you got a misunderstanding as to who or what is going on in the scriptures, mind you, that they are believing in. But it's the same God, though. But I, 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 I can't tell. You creating, you know, you creating a war, right, with a fellow believer. Because you're not reading the scriptures accurately and correctly you're over there in man-made religion uh no no that's not what i mean yes that is what you're in your religion is suppressing the people of god who are called to your church to stand in the gap to pray to be intercessors and now you want to beat them up because you don't understand the teaching or the background or what they're saying or you're not going to the Lord. So it is what it is. They lose many members that way. And hey, that's why many people are on YouTube. The Lord said many people aren't in church. I said, well, wait a minute. The ones that I'm talking to, I thought they're going to church. This was in the early days. He said, no, they're not. He said that, look at you. And at that particular time in my life, I wasn't in no church for years. But for some reason, I thought that they were. And I was talking to them about getting out the box. And then I found out that many of them, they were already out of the box. You see. And the box meaning that it wasn't so much um, getting out of a church setting. Because, of course, you know, we don't want to forsake the assembling of others. But these assemblies weren't happening at the church. They were, they were happening at hotels and so forth. But they were functional 
meetings. They were functional gatherings. They were not filled with a bunch of hocus pocus. Okay. And so those that were getting out or coming out or those that were already out just needed some direction in terms of getting out of the in the box mentality. And those people early on are the ones that are successful now. But we got some people who they are in the box and they're staying in the box. And God said, I just got you temporarily in the church right now to help you, to grow you. But some people are called to have their own churches and other people are called to not be of service of the church on Sundays, but be of service to the nonprofit groups on Sundays. And some people are starting up nonprofit groups. And so they're doing the work of the Lord. Um, there are those that are going to have the prayers that are going on in the office settings. It's not going to be at the churches. There are, there, there are those who are having the uh, gatherings at the hotels and those that are having gatherings in their homes. Okay, because so many people are not where they need to be in terms of being successful leaders in the church. <sighs> Lord Jesus. So once again, first Peter five, eight, after I've said that, doesn't it really sound, wow, be sober minded, be watchful, your adversary, even in the church, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, lion seeking someone to devour. Romans eight twenty eight, right? And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So some people are being called away from the blame, right? Call, being called away from the shame, being called from the arguments, being called from the confusion and all of that, that just so happens to be in a church setting or happens to be at their home or happens to be at the job. Why? So that they can be a success. They prayed it. So let them go. Let them be free. John 8, 4, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. This is what's keeping some people from being successful in Christ. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth. Nothing to do with the truth. We'll argue against the truth. We'll lie about the truth. We'll cover up concerning the truth. We'll deny the truth. You see? The messages doesn't resonate with some people because they're too busy caught up in fighting up against the truth because you hurt my feelings. Because you didn't say the right thing. Because I don't like the way you enunciated that word or you made too many mistakes or you, I thought you were this color or that ethnicity or whatever. And at the end of the day, that none of that should matter. There should not be the blaming. It should not be the shaming. You asked to be a success. I'm telling you the truth. But yet, they want to follow after the demonic. Okay, go right ahead then. And you see what happened to your predecessors who followed after the demonic. Their vices, drugs, alcohol, you name it, lust, just running around all willy-nilly. You know what happened to them, right? Hmm, okay. They don't want nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him or in them. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. Some of them ex-boyfriends, current boyfriends, husbands, wives, mistresses, Leaders in the church, leaders nationally, internationally, when these people lie, they speak out of their own character for what? They are liars and the father of lies, right? For he is a liar and the father of lies. That's what it happens. That's what happens to so many of these individuals who follow after the devil, who sell their souls to the devil, who sign packs and blood, who stand up there and they're saying all sorts of gibberish words. Believing that the demonic has overtaken them. Oh, yeah, the demonic has overtaken them all, right? Lord Jesus. And they, and they go to the Lord and they ask for success too. <laughs> but you in darkness though. I know. So why you want to have something to do with the people of God? Or, because I know that there is some power though in it. You want some money. Yep, I want some power. Yep, I want some fame. I want this and that. They all want, they want it all. Yeah, and then God destroys some people too for that, okay? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. They were here among us, and now they're gone. Zechariah eleven seventeen. woe to my worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. That's what these false leaders are. That's what these hypocrites are. That's what some of those folks in the church are. Woe to my worthless shepherd, worthless shepherds who desert the flock, always going over here and there doing all sorts of things at other churches, other gatherings, other groups, deserting the flock 
May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. Let his arm be whole, uh, wholly withered, his right eye utterly blinded. That's a little secret some of them don't want you to know. They've been deemed worthless shepherds, worthless leaders, worthless fathers, mothers, what have you. Worthless. Because they did what? They deserted. They deserted people. They just left. They just left them high and dry. Okay? So that's why some of these churches are also going downhill. That's the truth. Genesis 3, 11 through 13, he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Notice the blame, and I'm going to leave this message right here in this scripture. The blame. Once again, we got folks who sit up there and they say, I want to be a success. Okay. The minute, the minute they make an error of some sort. Oh no, that was Jenny. That was Tom. That was Bobby. They're doing the same thing that the man did to the woman and the woman did to the serpent. And everybody's at fault. Everybody's at fault. Nobody was supposed to be doing any of what took place. And so right now we've got these individuals who they're not like the successful among us because they simply blame too much. We understand your story. We empathize with your story. We've gone through the fire and prayer concerning some of these people. And yet they still want to blame. It's time to get off that bus of blame. Stop it. You are blocking your blessings. You're blocking opportunities for God to bless you with a new wife, new husband. You're blocking your blessings that your children could have, should have, would have because you're too busy blaming. And so ashes to ashes, dust to dust for many of these people. They will not let go of blame. They're older now and they're still blaming. They got all of the information that they need and they still refuse to say, okay, I get it. I understand. Nope. They want to blame. They talk about the, the kids blaming the, the parents. Look at all the parents who blame the kids for everything. But you were the leader of the household. And so you blaming the kids now because of things that God allowed to happen. God allowed the division. God allowed the separation. God allowed it because, simply put, since we on our blame bus, simply put, because somebody didn't want to do what was right according to the will of God a long time ago, before the children arrived. And they kept thinking, I'm blessed. And they kept thinking, I'm good, and I'm okay, and I'm all right. And now that God has taken so much from them, oh, no, I guess I'm not so good. I'm not all right. I shoulda, coulda, woulda. And so they're spending the remaining years on this planet serving time on this side. Time that they should have served a long time ago. But in God's grace and mercy and because of praying grandmothers and praying wives and praying uncles and praying whoever, okay, you got off easy. But now for that rebellious, for the unrighteous, for the immoral, for the backslider, no. It's a long journey to the grave I know it's deep right but I had to share that with some of you young people because you're sitting up here thinking that people getting away with stuff while they sitting up here blaming you for this that and the other that took place God is turning his finger and pointing at the one who brought you into this world know that know that somebody's free right now in the name of Jesus just on that just on what I just said hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus I no longer carry the blame and shame from what my parents put upon me many, many years ago. They were blaming and shaming early on because their parents blamed and shamed them for even getting pregnant to begin with. You got pregnant to him? You got involved with her? They was blaming and shaming a long time ago because mm, I thought you could, <laughs> you should have picked a better wife than her. And so when all the blaming and shaming was going on, a lot of that was falling on that wound that that mother carried 
And so the children, they're born into this world where they were rejected before they even showed up. But I'm telling you once again that you can be a success in this life when you cast away blame, when you cast away shame. Hey, I'm all right. Thank you, Jesus. I'm good. Thank you, Lord. And matter of fact, before we close out this message, let's go over to shame. Let's go right over to shame. Okay. Here's the scriptures. Isaiah 61, 7 says, instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double portion. Come on. They shall have everlasting joy. That's for you who have been blamed, who have been shamed. Isaiah 57. Here's another one. But the Lord God helps me, right? The Lord God helps you. Therefore, what? Don't worry about being disgraced, right? Therefore, I've not been disgraced. Therefore, I've set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. All right. Sometimes you got to walk that way. First John 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, right? Confess your sin. Just simply confess your sin. That way you can be the success. You can have that story. You can tell some people about God and all his glory. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Hebrews 12, too, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Psalm 34, 4, 5, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. And closing, Romans 10, 11, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. So, you see, I'm believing in the one true God. That's how come I'm not concerned about shame. I'm not concerned about blame. You see, long time ago, I saw these scriptures. These are very popular scriptures. <laughs> I mean, if you go to church at some point, somebody is going to say something out of the Bible related to these scriptures. These are some powerful scriptures. These are the scriptures that we heard and we held on to. That's all right. They shamed me because I had that ugly looking face. Oh, uh -huh. I had to call some people's mind to remembrance. And uh, they shamed me because, uh, you know, I wasn't built the way some other people were built. And they shamed me because they said that my scores, my grades or what have you was not good enough. And they shamed me because I wasn't the right ethnicity. I wasn't the right gender. And they shamed me because I wasn't married when I got impregnated. And they shamed me because I was divorced. Uh-oh. Then remarried, Lord Jesus. And then they shamed me because I was in an age gap relationship. And still, I am married in an age gap relationship. Come on. And they shame you because you live in a certain environment that we don't welcome your kind. And they shame you because you have a certain leadership role that you shouldn't have. Or you're serving the people in a setting that you shouldn't have and all of these things that they shame and they blame and they say that you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't and you can't and you won't and i say that god say hallelujah thank you jesus and i end the message just like that thank you jesus hallelujah and thank you for listening this concludes the series of what it takes right to be a success all right I pulled out various topics, various scriptures, gave you personal experience, gave you instruction, wisdom, and I just pray that you will use this and do great and mighty things with it. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube Venom Enterprise 7. To God be the glory. Please do check once again that description box. And if you feel so moved to give, please do. I appreciate it. Blessings to you.